Welcome. This is a July 25th Beehive Production user call. We have Andrew, John, Mark, and myself, Michael, so far. And Mark is a FreeBSD committer who is joining his first call. And welcome, Mark. Um, could you summarize some of the parts of FreeBSD you've worked on, especially actively? Well, you know, right now I'm I'm looking at uh, you know Beehive and other types types of uh, issues that have been coming up, but. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to uh, look at any kind of uh, issue that, that piques my interest. And anything specific to Beehive? You mentioned GDP before we started recording. Uh, I know certain folks like oh. John Mark Johnson and others are like, "Hey, this is really useful." So, so in the in the in the past, I I had supported uh, uh, upgrades to GDP and uh, TCSH. Nice. As some of the things that I've done. Well, uh, chime in as you see fit. We've been tracking a few topics and there are a whole bunch of like 90% complete efforts that are somewhat frustratingly languishing. Uh, just, I I do curate lists such as libvdsk, so you can open up a QCOW2 image and it's been talked about at length in conferences yet it hasn't hit the tree, so, uh, I know uh, Doug Rapson, who's been active on the jail calls, he got the 9P client going, and that's pushed the discussion of all such things. And that's why I'm so excited about Emil's report on Vert IOFS. So let's just watch this space and let's see, get just together, get a lot of those nailed home. Uh, let's see, John, you had a question that may have popped up. And John is also a, a Developer, FreeBSD committer, Emeritus, I believe, might be your school active. Yes, that would be the right word. Cool. And welcome, Patrick. Go ahead, John. What you got? Uh, this was just a question for Mark, and it's opportunistic only based on his TCSH comment. Uh, recently, the root shell changed, and I haven't found a quick and easy way to get the bang and bang bang syntax back. Anybody know how to do that? I'd probably say that uh, there, there are definitely things that are lacking in the base SH. Uh, yes. That, uh, we have come to, to like in, uh, you know, TCSH, CSH, and uh, uh, even Bash. So I, I'm guessing that that is one of the things that is not implemented. Has anyone yeah. seen corruption doing, say, up arrow? I get like half of my previous line and an ambiguous insertion point and other things. It's been a bit frustrating, I'll say. I see that on a serial console, but I don't see that under X term. Bingo, exactly. So something's going on. That's not just a BSD thing. I've seen that all over the place. So. <laughs> On the uh, on the Illumo side, specifically between hardware console and uh, serial, or just across the board. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, of uh, X terms going on, but I okay. see it on uh, some of my SS SSH sessions more rarely. Hmm. But I u usually serial and hardware console. So if I just have a pure text hardware console, I will see it regularly. It's quite infuriating. There you go. Um, so hardware text console. Got it. Just saying, because I'm never comfortable when things worked reliably for a decade or two and then stopped working. It's like, well, how did we screw that up? Anyway, uh, let's see. And Patrick, while we're just kind of going down the list, do you have any topics to share or updates on a certain storage appliance? No worries. Okay, uh, Antrenig ran out of RAM on a very large system. He might chime in with that. I know he's got his hands full, but it was just classic. And specifically this error status 137, ARC and Beehive collided and just be very careful. 
I'm hoping Emil can drop in with an update on Vert IOFS. Uh, that is a that's come up a few times, and it's an exciting complement to Nine PFS. And again, Doug Rabson has been oh, getting that Juniper client into base. You can grab a 15 snapshot. You can run it on something as old as I believe 13.0, which has the 9P server. And you can uh, go with uh, root on 9PFS. There should be a new snapshot today. Thank you, Colin. And I have updated the Beehive Wiki on how to do that. And if if Illumos has the 9PFS server, you should be able to drop a FreeBSD virtual machine 15 snapshot under it and go. I have a very selfish question, which is a uh, show of hands, who's after in 2024, a fan of APC Eaton or Liebert APC, uh, UPSs. I got a, some feedback earlier. Andrew is a Liebert fan. Uh, John, Patrick, Mark, if I may, are you running any of those in, in production? No, I use them personally, but I don't use them uh, production. I'm Got not it. even sure what we use production. That was okay. a stupid so uh, if you don't I will clarify yes, one thing on my please. statement. The reason I like Lieber is at least all the ones we have are all line interactive. No, they're not line interactive. They're dual conversion rather than line interactive. So they're always going through the inverter, mm -hmm. which means you don't get any kind of sine wave variance when you flip over, which we were able to see on some of the low, particularly lower end APC UPSs. So that's something I would say to watch for. Nice, and has anyone gone wild and gotten a lithium ion base UPS? No. Someday, someday. Like that lithium ion mower I'm hoping to get. Okay. Uh, following, I, following up on his comment, yeah, I would note, I mean, this uh, the personal basis, I try to never, ever use the simulated sine wave units. Cool. Uh, someone is muted. Patrick, no, I'm not muting you. Um, ask to unmute. I'll see if that button does something. Maybe the gremlin. So a gremlin. Maybe. Oh, Mark, uh, prior to 9PFS. So yes, let's touch on that. There's a comment from Mark in chat, which was, okay, what were people doing prior to 9P? And I will dig up an article I published. So uh, Marius, I believe, came up with a nifty NFS handle handler such that it uh, you can't just aim raw FreeBSD at an NFS server, a raw Beehive VM in FreeBSD, but he found a neat tool to, uh, uh, to get the kind of calculations right, if you will. And so I will drop that in chat and it's still not a file system. It has its quirks and 9P has its quirks and I'm sure Vert IOFS will have its quirks such that certain things like an air quotes on a, DB, a Berkeley database might not be happy. And uh, I gave actually a talk on this because once you see that you can, uh, you can have a boot environment that is not unlike a Chirrut or a Jail or now a VM come 9PFS and uh, NFS root and all that. Uh, I will drop, I've dropped in the chat. I will drop it in the document. So yeah, there have been various tools and people have used them for various purposes. However, they have not been institutionalized and that's where the in-base uh, 9P client is, is interesting. So I hope that helps answer. And John was doing some very interesting research into having a an NFS client in Beehive using libNFS. Sorry to tell your story, but the fascinating part there is that you could have a rather adventuresome hostile VM 
have its own uh, uh, talk to its own share and not run the risk of tanking the host because well there's one instead of just one nfs connection you have one per vm perhaps and it's isolated so uh john i will assume you've been pretty busy with other cool things but if you've got any news it's, there, it's, 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 share, it's no. long back burner but not forgotten. i understand not forgotten that's hey that's all uh there's hope that's all we hope for uh it looks like so, so part, part, part of my thoughts on this is that with the new 90 and maybe with the virg fs it makes sense to someone should do a blog on pros and cons of the various approaches to share files across from from beehive and amen and that venn diagram is literally unfolding as we speak it is different every few days with every new snapshot because doug's been pretty rapidly addressing issues i filed a bug or two bug report or two so uh would be and i know doug's been so john baldwin's been using like the built-in debugger for debugging, obviously, and Doug's using 9P for kernel development. So there are various ways, there are various ways of looking at it. And yes, it would be great to hear from such folks. And Patrick, good luck with audio. You are currently muted, but hopefully things are working. And yes, John, that's extremely common knowledge, just kind of probably cobbler shoes. He stepped uh, on his own tail with uh, the... Uh, yeah, for, your, for your comment earlier, I just, Thought I'd uh, post yeah. it. So, yeah, Antrenig had his arc collide with the virtual machine. So let me jump, uh, drop in Mark's comments. Uh, would be nice to have uh, a blog or similarly on the various uh, root on NFS slash 9P slash vert IO. And let me know if that's accurate. Uh, FS uh, options and there. there. So, yeah, uh, agreed completely. Um, while questions formulate in your head, someone blasted something at me and I'd love your feedback. Uh, the question was, hey, there are nifty new micro VM technologies, and they mentioned QEMU's micro VM. Um, naturally, there's mention of Docker. Yes, Docker, we get it. And that's been very well covered on the jail calls and with Doug's OCI work. Um, I someday will understand what Nick's OS is about, because I've heard it's a packaging thing. It's, a, it's, it's many things. But how that relates to virtual machines uh, that remains to be seen. And as we all know, zones and jails have been around for decades such that it's like, well, okay, containers, yes, that is not a new idea around here. So let's see what is so exciting about uh, home manager. System for managing user environment using a package manager. Okay, to me that says, let's look at the new FreeBSD package base. And that came up just yesterday with a new participant who's been experimenting with package base uh, configuration. To and you will find examples of creating, say, package based jails on the be on the jail document. So what do we have? Declarative version. Okay, uh, show of hands verbally, has anyone used Nix? And can you speak to its advantages? I keep hearing about them, but I can't. still can't pin down what they are. Oh, Nix OS <laughs> and Flakes. Uh, and Patrick, you're still muted. I don't think the fact that we're recording would have any impact on that. But hey, a computer was involved, so all bets are off. Nix and Nix OS, declarative package manager. Okay, so Nix is that kind. Achieving, achieving that state. Okay, so I'm I'm hearing item potence in that, which is a theme that's come up for years in these calls. Um Ah, describing a configuration and working to achieve it. Okay, you've got my attention. Great. 
uh, exceeded their expectations. Do, 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 do. So, yeah, okay. Uh, maybe like we did with Tosterson and the Lumos zones, we can bring find an expert and bring them on. If some of you know someone who's a Knicks fan, not to be confused with a sports team, then dive on in. I'm seeing vendors. I'm seeing more vendors. Let's see. So, yeah, I think someone is just kind of venting and blogging, but with some good points hiding in there. I will leave that to the reader to come up with something if if that doesn't ring any bells for any of you. Okay. Um, Patrick, let's see. I've been clicking the ask to unmute, which shouldn't in any way block you, and people come and go all the time, so I don't know what's going on. Um, I have a small update. I will be giving a talk on FreeBSD on ARM64 at FOSSE next in a week or two. I've been experimenting with the Thunder X machine I have. It has the Gik V3. It runs Beehive. It runs a VM. I tried to use DevCTL device removal for pass-through. I could not remove a device, which is not a Beehive question. Um, but that is exciting. Last time I checked, it has a 16B CPU limit, like the good old days on, on AMD 64. But uh, hopefully that will get addressed, just as it did with uh, AMD 64. Patrick says he added some comments to the document. I am not seeing them. And Patrick, a nice hack is to uh, join in with your phone for for audio because hey that the appliances are generally quite good at that let's see a co-worker is exploring nix os it's infrastructure as code to the extreme you cannot change anything without the running instance after the fact it's all declarative you write out everything in a dsl and fire up it. okay uh i like that notion and i'd be very curious of what the closest workalikes are on uh, FreeBSD and Illumos. Um, and maybe you have another comment. Excuse me. Uh, I might sneeze. Uh, you said you had a second comment. And so I hope to also publish soon an update to uh, OccamBSD and Imagine SH, where I suppose you could uh, make your changes in the source tree of the OS. Ah, CyberPower. Excuse me. Uh, you can make your changes in the OS. I'm sneezing, and I actually reached the mute button this time. So um, with the new MakeFS type ZFS, you can create a bootable image. And if you do that directly out of the release engineering directory release in the source tree, you could go immediately from everything that's in source to a bootable system. And I think that's quite fascinating. And to some degree, if that was structured uh, nicely, you could in fact achieve something a bit like Nix. Uh, it would be malleable. I don't know if Nix is preventing you from making changes and just says, hey, this is read only, have a nice day, it's an appliance, but that's all quite fascinating. Uh, so, um. What else? There will be quite a bit of Beehive content at EuroBSDCon coming up. And I specifically did not push very hard for a BeehiveCon insofar as it's all over the schedule. And to that degree, BeehiveCon is a bit obsolete. And last year we, in Coimbra, we did a, a hackathon of sorts. And that went quite well because, hey, Beehive's a thing. Um, I would love to know from all of you, I, what pain points? Go ahead, Andrew. I was going to say, I, I, I kind of feel like it makes more sense to kind of glomp onto the, one of the other broader conventions rather than do a separate beehive con. Um, so it so far, beehive con was pioneered in. Tokyo as part of Asia BSD Con, then made its way to 
Canada, and then I believe third was Euro Beehive Con, which is simply during the tutorials and meetings days of the BSD conferences. Exactly, so, continuing to do that type type oh, of yeah. thing. Amen, because I sure don't want to align, uh, organize a venue, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But, um, but also my point is that it's. Beehive is so well covered that between the hallway track at such events and the general developer discussions, Beehive is getting wonderful attention as opposed to the early days when it was like, what the heck is this? So uh, point taken, and I agree completely. Um, uh, I was going to say, hey, for this group, especially with Mark joining and John, do we have just a remaining top three Beehive issues to address? Um, at BSD can live migration came up as well. VMware has gone sideways for many people and is turning down 25,000 VM clients. Uh, where is live migration? So I've, re I've rekindled a few mailing list threads and not received a single peep from that. Um, I'm glad to see the 9P invert IO FS work going. Uh, John, this may interest you. Uh, maybe you caught it, maybe not. It sounds like from Ed in the Enterprise Working Group call, uh, AMD, uh, AMD CPUs are getting their IOMMU updates because, hey, folks like Santiago were being bitten by uh, SRIOV being a bit unstable and unpredictable. So in theory, we will see patches in a week or two. That would be nice. I forget, are you running AMD hardware or are you mostly an Intel shop or possibly? Uh, mostly shop in one? mostly Intel, a few AMDs. Okay. Which it's I'm guessing a question of supply and demand. If they're not stable, we won't be running it and buying them and et cetera. Et cetera. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, Andrew, somewhere at some point I came up with an ARM sixty four image of I believe Omni OS. Do you know if they've wiggled any in producing uh, something I can easily download and deploy as opposed to build from who knows where? I have no idea. Um, I'm not on ARM for really anything. I mean, I've got Back a couple of Raspberry demand. Pis floating Back around, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they're all running Linux. Okay. Uh, cool. And I'm not managing them personally, so. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, a year or two ago, someone out of Japan drop the bomb of uh, hey here is uh here is both arm 64 support you know primordial and here is risk five I'm like whoa hello someone's thinking someone's got time on their hands i guess they made good use of lockdown um you are sharing a bug mark let's see if that's santiago oh here's another one uh glipc new when is that from i'm taking a peek at this actually we can do that as a group if you like uh mark has this bitten you is that why you're bringing it up or you just noticed it no i just noticed it and since you had mentioned amd oh. yeah so uh santiago has a pretty well documented bug and that fortunately that got the foundation in motion to dedicate some of kib's time to that so i for one am very grateful for that and let's see what we've got um and if it's not obvious, I'm not very good with like VM beehive questions because I live pretty far upstream and look at topics like this. So 2024, 622 modified uh, two days ago. Got it. Let's see. So essentially there was, there was, an optim there was some optimizations done in a version of glibc mm. that not playing well with the implementation of beehive. And uh, no one's been able to uh, have the hardware and the ability to track it down yet. Have they been provided? Okay, here we go. Yes, some meat. Because I'm thinking, the, shouldn't the hypervisor provide adequate separation that these two ships shall never cross paths? But is that specific to the GDB plugin to Beehive, maybe? No. Okay, interesting. No, oh, I think it has AMD to do more with, I it. think it has more to do with instruction set at this point. Okay. And got it. With, anyway. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing that because that is 
absolutely fresh. And if you look for, you, know, you start searching on Beehive on the bug tracker, it's like you see decade old issues that may not apply to anything. And uh, uh, two days old. So I've given some examples of what I would really like to see fixed. Uh, and, ah, yeah. So uh, Patrick, who's in chat and is is having some form of mic issue, has been tracking uh, the no VNC client having both color issues and refresh issues on both FreeBSD and TrueNAS Core. Uh, Patrick, I for one have not heard of anything new and I suspect the previous uh, documents, uh, the previous minutes talk about that. No VNC. Is there anyone present who is being impacted by this beyond Patrick? Okay, here are some issues. I just did a quick search. And Patrick, as I recall, I know you're at the mercy of chat. It was like, not our problem was the uh, comment from the no VNC folks. And I believe that was simply, yes, the last call. Do, 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 do. Refresh issue solved. I broke it by adding a feature that, okay. So uh, I will make that an update. Thank you, Patrick. The thing to realize is that the, it's a minimal implementation of VNC within Beehive. Yep, correct. And a challenge there was that it is permissively licensed. There are far more sophisticated uh, GPL-based components, but that was not going to be compatible with the original goals of Peter and company, which is totally understandable. I, for one, would love to see XRDP dropped in as perhaps a little plug-in so you could have an RDP uh, interface to the frame buffer. Uh, so if anyone's in the mood, great. Uh, you have my blessing <laughs> to make that happen. Some have requested spice, but I have yet to bump into spice in in the wild. I've not um, seen it in an actual implementation, but I know the virtual cable guys have it as an option. So I strongly suspect they've encountered it in the wild. That is a great observation. Um, so. Andrew's been experimenting with virtual cable, which is either a bit like Apache Guacamole or based on it or related to it. Or do you have any news on that? I know you went from like prototype to fixing a few bugs with the authors and then moving forward with content. I'm connected to it right now. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, um, they do uh, build on Guacamole for their web interface. Um, I'm not using that aspect. I find guacamole to be a little uh, slow. Mm -hmm. So I would much rather use a normal RDP client that's just uh, routed through there. They've got a, um, what do you call it? Uh, a tunneling set up for it. And I find that much zippier. Nice. But it seems to, for the most part, work. Uh, here are some links, Mark, per your request from the document. I did publish the whole document there, but at what's now 193 pages and over 200 pages for jail, it's due for some archiving. Thank you very much. I do want to get me. it to where, to where we can use... Uh, Beehive as the hypervisors are that it's really talking to in an intelligent way. I mean, right now we can, you know, use like as a hypervisor if we pretend like it's a standalone, like the VM is a standalone host, but that's not where I want to be. Interesting. I have thoughts on this. I just haven't had time to put them into any kind of manifestation mm -hmm. and i believe you said the authors were pretty responsive yeah um i mean there's time zone issues there in oh, yeah. spain so at least for me there's like a one to two hour window where i can possibly talk to them yeah, yeah, yeah. but 
Yes. So yeah, um, I've been living and dying by RDP for six months now, and let me just aim at a machine. And yes, something like a Windows VM under Beehive with RDP is great, but that doesn't mean you get like weight and boot blocks and other, all, or all the early stuff. So it's still really valuable to have that built into UEFI GOP. And don't get me wrong, is there any standard for securing VNC or is it, well, I sure hope your VPN works and have a nice day. Not our problem. Um, like, because I know RDP has yeah, some... The standard is the standard is tunnel it hmm. over something. Um, sure. VNC, VNC was never designed to be a secure protocol. And that's I've heard people knock Beehive because of that alone. I'm like, well, mm, yeah, sure. Uh, Typically, what what uh, yeah. what we do when using it for a um, for accessing the consoles on machines is we will set up a we will SSH to it and set up SSH to the host and set up an SSH tunnel Naturally. that we can use. Uh, Mark, are you managing Beehive with something other than, say, raw command line or VM run or VM Beehive or countless other things out of curiosity? No, I, right now I'm just using uh, like VM Beehive. Cool. And while it does appear idle. Entrenic has been contributing to it and looking to integrate his jail management tool, Jailer, with it. So I'm I'm grateful for that. And just last week, uh, Wi-Fi Box came up, which is a fascinating little project that lets you run a small Alpine, I believe, VM on a FreeBSD, notably laptop, and passes your Wi-Fi device through to the VM and then creates a bridge and says, okay, here this, this not so well supported on FreeBSD uh, Wi-Fi is suddenly made available, and uh, I don't see why you couldn't fundamentally do that on, say, Omni OS, although I don't recall people running a whole bunch of Illumos on laptops, but uh, I'm happy to be disproven on that one. And I'm doing a quick check of the Omni OS repos to see if they have sprouted any notion of ARM64 support selfishly for my talk coming up uh let's see it i love that name bloody for their bleeding edge ones very <laughs> visceral there other bloody downloads that's a very british way of phrasing it um yes. and if i search i mean on... back in the no Go back ahead. in the sundays i ran open indiana on a laptop wait was there ever a notion of Say uh, suspend resume. Well, it's just not a thing. Um, it's <laughs> the Sundays have been a while now. Yeah. Um, I think it, I think it was suspending properly. Okay, and uh, Andrew, what is a dot Unix re uh, thingy? And uh, Mark, uh, what? Bug are you referring to for reporting? Oh, I, I was talking about the VNC issue. Ah, yes. So right now it, it's a generic issue against uh, no VNC, but it might be good to have a FreeBSD bug opened with a with a good uh, reproduction. Good point. Uh, Patrick, has any has anyone moved on that? I'm surprised you're having audio trouble. I will, quit for what it's worth, ask to unmute. Yeah, okay. Uh, track it with a free BSD ticket. Cool. Okay, so I didn't hear a whole lot of pain points for the coming months to just focus on. Uh, I... I know Hans is lined up to look at TPM emulation. That would require some funding. Uh, 
for iOS, that would be great. Oh, and on a recent call, someone said, hey, reach out to Patrick about Vert IO VSOC work that he mentioned long ago at BeehiveCon, but he doesn't recall that. So it sounds like Vert IO VSOC, which someone termed the 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 last Vert IO interface you'll ever need. Uh, that is something that could use some greenfield love, it sounds like. But either way, I and all of you will just press ahead step by step, getting things done as best we can with the resources we have. Um, and if you're wanting a demo, I can give a quick demo on, yeah, dot Unix, no worries, uh, a demo of the Occam BSD work and what I've been babbling about on social media, notably the Fediverse, Mastodon and friends. Okay. Or it's late in the week and we all just get back to what we're doing. I've got a long list of things. The in-laws leave this evening and uh, back to our regular programming. I'm doing one more look for OmniOS. I'm 64. I swear I had an image of it long ago. Heck, I might have it in a downloads directory and I'll try and fire that sucker up for my talk. Um, Anything else, gang, or shall we call it good? Uh, Mark, some of these calls have gone on for hours upon hours, delving into oh, uh, file descriptor handling and correctness and you name it. Uh, and that's those are conversations that haven't taken place elsewhere. So I guess that's our contribution to society. Um, I also think broadly that production users have not been super well represented in the ecosystem of super noisy hobbyists and bloggers and vendors who just sort of tell us all what they think the world should look like. So I'm so glad you're all participating in this. Well, while Mark is online, I'm, I'll repeat a, a thing Please. that I had been work, working on a little bit a few months ago. Please. Um, and no, I do not have a ticket for it. Um, and that is the concept where I have the MAC address follow the VM. And it would be really nice if we could, uh, PCI comp or, uh, uh, would, uh, um, could, could program the uh, SRIOV entries for a NIC with the MAC instead of having them be uh, specified uh, either random or specified one time at startup time. And that would be handled by PCI Conf or a different tool? Uh, I'm sorry, it's not PCI Conf. It's, uh, wow, my brain just went south. No, the thing I just had to run on, like, ARM just before the call. <laughs> I should know this. Um, uh, hang on a minute. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll raise you. Hail. And I'm staring at an ARM64 Beehive machine right now. Let me uh, hail. Wind detach. It is DevCTL. And although, would DevCTL be MAC address aware, or is it a No, it's, it's, and... it's not, it's not okay. DevCTL. Okay. It's, uh... My bad. Oh my goodness. I got too much stuff going on. Sorry, guys. No worries. Uh, if there is a breakthrough on AMD's hardware and at the IOMMU support, that does mean that all things IOMMU are fresh in somebody's head or multiple heads. So. Uh, that would be a great time to just say, you know, by the way, that's that's excellent work there, and let's keep going. Um, you have good Volo VMs. Uh, and currently that's set in a loader, or what? I'm sorry, 
were you is that referring? Set, is is the MAC address for say a uh, SRIOV VM set in the loader or where? No, it's set in a it's set in a file in slash Etsy, and I swear I'm sitting here looking at it. I can't find it. Um, I'm looking at a brand new system and I cannot find it. So, oh, Daniel, welcome. Huh. Uh, we have gone through a few topics. Mark is joining us for the first time. John's on for the first time in a while, and we've. Uh, if anything, someone made a whole bunch of requests related to NICs, and uh, that's fascinating to me insofar as it's declarative, it's idempotent, it's a bunch of things. I don't know if you bumped into NICs, but uh, while John's looking something up. And also, Daniel Emil has not been able to join and give us an update on Vert IOFS, which might also help your adventures with your notion of a VM that can safely receive untrusted ZFS sends. Okay, sorry for all the scrolling. Um, gently scrolling around. Okay. Uh, John, I can stick around a few minutes if you find that, and I'll drop it in the dock. Uh, Daniel, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, looking. If you want us, cool. I don't doubt that. Uh, how's it going, Daniel? Good, good. I was uh, just looking at that uh, um, out of security update date for Windows 10, and oh. thinking about all of my Windows 10 VMs. Um, and, uh, did they set a how deadline? Much I need October or something? Yeah, I or think what? it's I think it's October twenty five. Okay. So yeah, so anyway, time to get uh time to get cozy with TPM. By the way, wouldn't it be would it be easy to get TPM um a TPM option just built into VM beehive? Because I don't think it has one. Uh let's see. That's to do the pass through. Uh well what are what are the TPM options? So uh, Hans has come up with a proposal for uh, TPM emulation. Goran ported the payload from IBM, which happens to be permissively licensed, and uh, it's looking like either of those. You either pass through the one single TPM, or you come, we all come up with some money for emulation because you can't quite do that as a hobby, unfortunately, at the very moment. Okay, uh, take care, Patrick. Sounds like you're having some technical difficulties. Have a great weekend. Uh, how do other uh, VM, how how are other hypervisors? Uh, what's the sort of standard for UEMU handling this? The IBM firmware payload that I mentioned that's been around for quite some time, and they just have it integrated. And you say, hey, "Here's my emulated uh, TPM device, and go for it." So the proposal with Han is, Hans is to uh, follow that loose path and produce that in Beehive for both the Lumos and FreeBSD. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that sounds like I'm in favor of emulating it. Yeah, same. That sounds like an easy thing to fundraise for, uh, if needed. Yes, uh, the only uh, TPM. Uh, the challenge is that uh, we are surrounded by Unix people, and they periodically uh, turn their noses up to things like Windows 11, despite the importance of that. So uh, I will try to get that out there and just put it, send out the hat and see what happens. Uh, your... Your, the endorsement you just made is super helpful in and of itself, believe it or not. So make sure you include me on that because we're going to probably be interested in that at some point. Okay. And I'm a serious, uh, I, I run a serious organization with tens of dollars. So. <laughs> tens of dollars. Excellent. Me too. Yeah. I, I can provide each one of you coffee and occasionally a crumpet, but no, I, I have my good days, my, my, challenging days um okay well that's actually really good motivation i will put that out there and uh i mean i'm not sure what our budget is going to look like in the super near future but no worries it's a problem we're going to have to have solved because 
as much as we're trying to get rid of as much Windows as we can, we're not going to get rid of all of it. You always need one, at least to like, at least to run our sad, at least to do, yeah, you know, testing. So, yeah. So, so is it issue just being able to run Windows eleven? Not, I... not necessarily. So, so the so the problem, so the the concern is that the lab mode for Windows eleven is sometimes a moving target. That they've they've changed the way it, it works between versions, which which is problematic. That can add a maintenance issue. So yeah, Windows Windows eleven is the reason, and avoiding lab mode might might become more and more important as time goes on. So that's that's the reason why it's attractive to us. I, I realize there are there are workarounds, but uh but 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 I think I think stability in that area would probably be a good long term goal. And don't in addition, wrong. it's probably not just going to end up being Windows 10. Eventually you're gonna have to have it for anything Microsoft. It, it's yeah. it's just a matter of time. You took the words out of my mouth. And let's flip this on its head. If I'm on, say, Illumos or FreeBSD, do we have a clever use of the TPM that has absolutely nothing to do with Windows or a Microsoft product? Like, can I put my um, SSH keys or cool decryption keys or something in it and have a meaningful use of it? Theoretically, you should be able to. I mean, I'm not an expert by any means, but... That's the whole argument for the thing is that, yeah. I'm going to put it in big letters here, uh, TPM, because if it's a nifty open standard technology that some group put a bunch of time into developing and some chip fab made a cute little chip out of, they must have done that with some motivation other than a product they might never use. So I will take it upon myself to just, do a quick search on what options are out there because uh, I'd, I'd hope it has more value to beyond uh, helping people lose all their data because a BIOS update blew out their keys on their laptop and <laughs> they never knew they had BitLocker running and don't get me started. So yeah, let's find the positive spin on TPM rather than the agonizing been and don't get me wrong if your motherboard fails and your disk is fine and it's somehow tied to this chip it's like well we've we've failed as storage tech another great reason to emulate it too bingo yep. so yeah That's why i favor emulating it is especially for our case if we want to move a vm from one machine to another i better have access to all of the stuff needed to boot it Picky. And to be clear, even yeah. as things exist now for us, that is still on Beehive, something I do with some degree of regularity. Okay. Yeah. And uh, with that, going back to my point from BSD can on the importance of live migration, like, gee, what does migration with a TPM look like? Don't know. Uh, does, what does that look like in QEM UKVM right here, right now? Don't know. Um, but if we had a killer app that has absolutely nothing to do with a Windows product, that would absolutely help. And gee, it may, might get me excited about it rather than always shuddering and getting nervous when I hear about something being enabled relating to a TPM. So yeah. Uh, TPM music. Uh, Daniel, did you do any more science on 9PFS and friends? Um, no, but I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of using it, you know. I just uh, just having having that shared space in. Um, I I don't do I don't do root. It's there's too there's too many um, surprises. There's too many issues with the uh, you know with the set UID bit, which I haven't been able to get around, and uh, yeah, so. Um, um, Mark but, but yeah, we're works, works about great. that. I mean, for what it's worth, would you have a few minutes to just do a quick side by side 9P and NFS shares and just do a just napkin notes Venn diagram of like what's a pain point on each and what's working great on each? 
Just sign in. Sure. Um, I haven't. I haven't actually been using NFS. I mean, I, I use it to to you know to to get me sources or whatever, just to share things one off. But yeah. um, uh, but yeah, I could I could I could do that. I mean, I guess the truth is, I haven't done I haven't done a lot of I haven't done a lot of sides side by side. Um, just because I've only used NFS as a share, and now I'm using sure. 9P as a share, which is fine. Uh, it's it's really just as root that I would care at all about the the sort of limitations. Mm -hmm. um, and Daniel, hopefully Emmy will join us a call in the near future. He's working on Vert IOFS, so that Venn diagram may actually have some teeth in the coming weeks. Mm -hmm. And John, yeah. you found it, I-O-V-C-T-L, which I confess I have not spent much time with. Do you want to just give us a quick, if it's just a not quite in a fully fleshed out state, maybe? I-O-V-C-T-L, let's look. It is on AM, uh, ARM64 for those who celebrate. PCI SRV configuration utility. Okay, there it is. Dev slash I-O-V. And John, do you know how many releases of FreeBSD this has been in from Brian Stone? And it uh, it's been in a few releases. LVC.com. Cool. Now you know. Um, and I'm getting the impression it just doesn't have the dynamics you'd want to see. That's correct. It does not. Got it. Uh, oh, and that is what number? That is also a an eight. Thank you very much. Okay, well, that's on the radar. And again, if the foundation lands a whole bunch of useful AMD-related code, uh, hopefully we can use that momentum to say, hey, you know, if we're serious about, you know, this whole notion, uh, let's go there. And, you know, uh, if... Well, hopefully someone is secretly making huge progress on live migration, but at the very moment, I'm not hearing peeps of that, and this plays right in. So anything else, gentlemen, at this time? Um, which yes. which version is this? Which, uh, can somebody remind me which version um, Suspend Resume is available in on FreeBSD? There are little bits of it here and there but no it's not really a thing it's just unfortunate not happening um they were arguing about the the format of the you know machine parameters and you name it um so uh if that's what you meant it's uh, 16 i don't know <laughs> I, oh. I yeah um and I see mention of Arch Linux. Did somebody find a nifty? That would be me. Yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, particularly. Rock our world. Let's, let's look. Go ahead. DMCrypt yeah. does support using the TPM device, and that runs on Linux. So. Okay. DMCrypt. Oh, I was worried you said VMCrypt right. such that it's a like CPU flag that is also going to tie you down and not make it migratable. Mm. Okay, DMCrypt. What is DMCrypt? I mean, I don't know much about this. Sure. Do you know what the DM is... stands for? Um, something, something. I don't know anything about this other okay. than. <laughs> cool. Well, hey, it's just... a start. And don't get me wrong, if one's ZFS, say, encryption keys were to live there, it may genuinely solve issues for the people uh here true crypt bitlocker setup okay um opens efs tpm keys let's see <laughs> tpm sealed encryption keys on github an issue let's take a look uh, okay, gang. <laughs> Let's I guess it's see if we just discovered all the things. It opened in 2023, not too long ago. 
What feature would you like to see? Extend, not generate. <clears throat> System D creds. Uh oh. Uh, that is not something for 3BSD or Lumos for those present, but a good idea is a good idea. Cool. Well, There's hey. There's got to be some good ideas in System D. I, yeah, hope so. Well, they've got all the ideas. So either it, statistically, there can't not be <laughs> if I got that right. It's like uh, it's the right document. Cool. Everything's That's in Pi. Bingo. Uh, that is not it. Where's my document? Here, document, document, document. Or am I on the wrong one? Let's see. I've got, <laughs> yes, I got a comment yesterday on the many tabs here. Well, oh, do I have pages and pages of tabs? And I don't have that sabbatical month to yeah. just clean all that up. I usually so that's a great example. break Go mine ahead. into a couple of windows so I don't get quite so many tabs on any individual window. Well, you keep giving great links to share for everyone, so that's how we uh, achieve this. So, okay, uh, 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 what was that system D thing? I, if I can do it without having to look at another tab and spend another. Minute. <clears throat> Looks okay. like system D crypt in the role. Okay. C r y p t e n r o l l. Yeah. Let me be... Perhaps like that, script and roll, tuck and Yeah, roll. looks right. Cool. Well, uh, that is interesting and potentially actionable. Excellent. So let's see. I see. Also, uh, SSH-TPM-Agent looks like another interesting thing. Yes. Uh, SSH-TPM with a hyphen. Like that. SSH dash, yeah. yeah. PPM dash agent. Sweet. Good. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Those are familiar things to we Unix folks. And heck, I'll grab this entire comment. Thank you, Mark, for that comment. That is right on topic. And, you know, we all have our fires to put out each day such that this sort of new territory stuff is both exciting and terrifying because, well, it's another thing on the to-do list. So, uh to do i did paste a little bit ago cool beautiful nice find mark um because if we have a killer app that has nothing to do with windows well amen let's do it go ahead all right i just wanted to say i, I need to jump so uh okay. thanks so, everyone thanks for joining yep uh if you're not receiving the uh invitations let me know just drop me an email address through this chat or otherwise okay okay Thanks. Take care. Yeah. Cool. That uh, this is progress. This is this is good in so far as you know we've probably each bumped into these things, but not like had someone threat with a know, checkbook saying, "Hey, we need this thing soon." And that whole probably forever extended Windows ten deadline is is looming it is looming and i will say i sure had trouble this week trying to get a hardware-based windows 10 installation to boot under beehive with even just the uefi gop graphics despite the fact that i was trying to do gpu pass through so i hope they haven't tickled something with an update to make it on because I really want Corbin's GPU pass through on a on a desktop. Thank you very much. I think that's the final frontier for a lot of things because you should never run Windows on bare metal in my book. Other topics, questions, ideas, concerns, funny jokes, t-shirt ideas, bring it on. Otherwise, I will get back to work. And I'm Personally, I'm interested in the uh, GPU pass through stuff as well. Cool. For uh, fragging or something else? Yes. Cool. Hey, amen. And That's why it's personal and not, <laughs> not business. Yeah. Um, amen. And for what it's worth, I mean, we should do hats off to the gaming community for pushing a lot of those GPU technologies and, you know, KVM, you name it. 
Uh, they've got a little more, various folks have a little more time on their hands than I do, and perhaps you do. So thank you, everyone out there who made that all progress ever so gently. Well, I, I say mean, we I call would, it. Right, go ahead, Andrew. I was going to say, I would love to run, uh, what is it, Proton on my file slash um, virtualization machine. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's, yeah. Cool. Well, let's call it. I'll be around a few minutes. Uh, we had the tragedy yesterday of, and Tuesday of things going on for another half hour. Some really good technical content that I just try to drop in as quickly as I can. But uh, yeah, good stuff, everyone. Thank you. Like and subscribe. You're all welcome to join. This is you, the listeners out there. We hope to see you on a call. Have a good one. Like and subscribe. <laughs>